I hope it's good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host, Larry W. Robinson. Oh, we're going to have a great broadcast tonight. Your questions about prophets, prophecy, and the prophetic will be answered. So you receive the word. Now what? That's what we're going to talk about tonight on the broadcast. I'm excited to have my guests. Uh, before we get started, I want to invite you one more time to download the Gospel Updates app. So if you have an Android uh, market, or if you got Blackberry, simply search my full name, Larry W. Robinson.com. Larry W. Robinson.com. And uh, you'll get the app and you'll be, you stay up to date on conversations like this and much, much more. Now, my guest today, I got two powerful guests, Dr. Paula A. Price. She's the author of several books, but we're going to focus in tonight on The Prophet's Handbook, as well as The Prophet's Dictionary. All right, Dr. Paula A. Price, welcome to the broadcast, my friend. Thank you, and thank you for having me here. I'm looking forward to tonight. Oh, no problem. Do me a favor real quickly. Tell the listening audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how to get in touch with you. Uh, again, I am Dr. Paula Price. I'm the author of the Prophet's Dictionary, the Prophet's Handbook. I'm also the creator of the standardized ministry assessments that are sponsored and distributed by my company, PPM Global Resources Incorporated, all of which are here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I train, I have a school, I travel. As you already know, I'm an author and uh, a lecturer and probably a, a hundred other things because when you birth one thing that is kind of groundbreaking, it spins off into a lot of other things. So in a word, that's who I am. You can reach me at drpaulaprice.com on the website. That's as Uh oh, Dr. Price. Yes. All right, we lost you for a quick second. Give me your website one more time. The website is drpaulaprice.com. All right. Also, my friend on the broadcast tonight, Dr. Larry D. Reed. He's the author of the Fivefold Ministers Reference Guide, a book, and uh, there's an entire chapter in here about prophecy. And I'm honored to have him once again on the broadcast. He also have a brand new single that's uh, going to be available real soon. I'm sure he'll tell you about that, but welcome to the broadcast again, Dr. Reed. Thank you so much for, for having me here once again. Um, it's so good to, to share this platform with, with you guys, a great platform that reaches many people. Uh, I am Dr. Larry D. Reed, and I'm an author. I'm also a, a, a pastor, and probably for about 20 years, I've been training people in the prophetic and in prayer. Um, I had a, the, one of the first school of prophets in in North Carolina in the early 90s um, and from that school of prophecy that I had I penned this book um, it was the, ma the manual for the course and this course has went global it's been done in the UK it's been done in the Caribbean and so I just decided to um, discontinue the school of prophecy except from isolated clinics that I do and put it all in a book where people can buy and learn all right, and I like I do like the way both of these books are written, uh, especially this one. Of course, is written really, really easy, <laughs> and in school style, so that people can learn. Well, I am excited. Um, many people, since we announced that we were going to have this uh, conversation, they've been texting and kind of wondering, are we going to be prophesying to the people tonight, and uh, other things uh, like that. But what we're going to do tonight is really answer the questions about prophets and prophecy and the prophetic. And so, Dr. Price, I'm going to start with you. First of all, what is prophecy? You know, there's so many misconceptions on what prophecy is and should we have prophets today and all of that. So let's start at the basics. What exactly is prophecy? Prophecy is God speaking from his world to ours to activate what he planned before time. All right. And wow. so that's, you want to add to that? I was going to ask you, Dr. Reed. Oh no, I was saying wow. I like that, that definition that she gave. Um, and I will also add to that, that prophecy is basically the mind of God being communicated to man. All right. Now, do we have modern day prophets today? I, I think many people, you know, Dr. Reed, we were talking about this earlier that if, let's say if you run a revival, if you say you're having mm -hmm. a revival at your church, and I invited Dr. Paula Price, I didn't say nothing about prophecy. I just said Dr. Paula Price. You might get 10 people, if they don't know her already, you might get 10 people that are 10. But if I said Prophet Paula Price is coming to the revival, it'll more than likely be a packed house. Why is that? We'll start with you, Dr. Reed. 
I think that people have a, a, a desire to know what is in the mind of God as it relates to their life, not just um, as it relates to their, their financial life or their love life, but just the life in general. And prophets are the connection that people have to the mind and to the will and the voice of God. And so uh, I can see why people will run whenever they hear that a prophet is, is in town or a prophet is, is somewhere ministering because it is what connects us all. It's the common thread amongst all men that we want to know what the will of God is for our life and why we were born. What is our purpose? What decisions should we be making? Should I do this or not do that? And people understand. And it's also, a, it's not just a Christian thing. All different kinds of people want to know why and have questions. And the prophet is the way that questions can get answered. That's good. That's real good. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paula Price, you want to add to that? Why is, uh, let's say, like we said before. I didn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh-oh. Dr. Reed, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, I Dr. Couldn't, Price. I couldn't hear you. What is your question? Oh, no problem. Why is it, let's say, when, if, if, if uh, we run a revival at church or just any kind of meeting at church, a conference or something, and we just if we just said Dr. Paula Price, is coming to speak and they didn't know you, uh, you might get maybe 10 to 20 people come. But if I say Prophet Paula Price is coming to the conversation, you'll more than likely get a packed house. Why is that? Well, I listened to uh, Dr. Reed and I can't say I disagree with anything that he said. I, I think if I were going to voice it most succinctly, people always want to know tomorrow and tomorrow's answers today. Future telling, future casting has always been the number one thing, and it crosses all fields, all lines, etc. People want to know today how to handle tomorrow. Now, it's historical, going back in time, historically, God has always done that through a particular force, which they used to call back in time divine communicators, because every deity had one. So God did the same thing, and what he does is he tells people three things prophetically. And in addition to what my brother said, he tells them their tomorrow. He gives them wisdom on how to answer it. And then the last thing he lets them know through the prophet is that he's already worked it out. Prophecy is always God's end working in our beginning. Mm. I love that. Mm. <laughs> Talking today with Dr. Paula Price. She's the author of two books, The Prophet's Handbook as well as The Prophet's Dictionary. Also, Dr. Larry D. Reed, he's the author of The Five-Fold Ministry Reference Book. Our conversation today is your questions about prophets, prophecy, and the prophetic answer. Now, one of the ways we kind of promoted our conversation tonight, Dr. Price, is we said, so you got a word of prophecy, now what? You got a word of prophecy, now what? Many people, they went to these, these lines, they had hands laid on them, they've been told to turn around three times and the prophet told them certain things and maybe seven years, ten years, or even a year it went by, some of it has not come to pass. We're wondering if, uh, or many people wonder, well, did the prophet lie? Did God lie? Did I? Am I in sin? What are the things that can hold up a prophecy? The question is, so you got a word of prophecy, now what? Do we have a responsibility that we need to do to make the word of prophecy come to pass? We'll start with you, Dr. Price. Well, there's not a whole lot that we as humans can do to make a word of prophecy come to pass. Prophecy, first of all, is notification, which means it's announcing to your God's notifying you that he is interposing or intervening himself in your life, your situation. Now, that is when prophecy is not the result of your petition. You're praying to God, God, what do I do about this situation? So that's the first thing. The most important thing I, I see us facing today, Larry, though, is people knowing whether or not that prophecy, that prophet is who or what she says he is. Just because someone delivers a prophecy does not make them a prophet. And when God gets ready to exert his muscle, that means impose himself in our time, he has to do so through his officials, through his agents. The prophets in the Bible were not just wandering prophets. They were people attached to an institution that went back in time. As a matter of fact, in my book, you'll learn, it goes all the way back to Abel, who was in fact the first prophet. 
But so we can have all of those antics. We can do those machinations and all of the things that we like to do to look as if we've got an end with God that we don't have. Bottom line, if God didn't inscribe it in our books, did not inscribe it in creation, we can say all we want to say. Uh, it's not going to happen. That's part one. If you allow me, I'd like to give you a part two of that answer. And okay. part two is prophecy is before time for a reason. It's before time because that means, because by definition, it's before time, pro femi, speaking beforehand. So prophecy is before time for a reason. And that means that there are, there are a number of things that God must. Actually talking like flesh, clothes, or clothing the word of God in flesh and giving it activation in our world. Now, that takes time. So we can get a prophecy and see in 30 seconds, but it can take 10 years for us to have a building or for God to put the right people in place. I'm going to give you some of those elements to making it happen. It can take a while for God to change the guard. It can take a little bit for God to put the right people in place. It can take a little bit to get you to relocate because it might be that the words you got in Georgia may not happen until you get to California. So there are a lot of elements, which is why a simple word of prophecy is insufficient for a person to act on or to even rest their life on. You need prophecy and you need the wisdom. So you need prophecy. And if it's particularly, if it's an emphatic word or an extensive word, you also need an accompanying prophetic wisdom. So that means you need the wisdom of the office coming along with the sound of the word. Mm. Mm -hmm. d -line. We can do a C-Law right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dr. Reed, you want to add to that? Yeah, I do want to add to that. Actually, just highlighting what she's saying. One of the things that I heard her say clearly was that there are certain elements that are tied to the prophetic word. And I think sometimes because of the lack of having master teachers on a subject such as prophecy, and also because of our personal lack of prayer, we are not sensitive to those things that we need to do or, or the, those things that possibly need to be done that is tied to the prophetic word. Like if a word is spoken, as she said to you, in a particular place or in a particular region, or it, it means that you need to meet certain people, or that it means that certain people need to obey God, I think sometimes we don't take these things into consideration, that prophecy is, is spoken, but then it's also there, there's certain elements that have to align with that prophetic word, certain people. Sometimes the prophetic word is subject to human handling. And so when it's like that, uh, we, we have to, to, to really be open to those things and be aware of those things. If God spoke it so enough, especially from a, a general or a prophet or someone who's really sitting in the office of the prophet, that word is going to, that word is going to come to pass. But there's many times a time continuum that is tied to, and that's what I heard Dr. Price say, that there's a time continuum. There's a certain position. There is a prophetic response to a prophetic word, and it's important that we align with those things. All right. Now, I think I'm going to ask a controversial question only because it was asked to me. And so any one of you can answer this, whoever answers first. Um, and how do I ask it? The question was, do you have to pay for a, pro a word of prophecy to be given to you? Who's first? You can go, Dr. Price. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, I think that that is an interesting thing. And, and if you allow me, I'm going to phrase, uh, phrase my answer within some sort of an analogy. We never question, do we have to pay our therapist? We never question if we have to pay our counselor, our financial advisor. We don't have to question any of those things. Why? Because we see value in the words that come out of their mouth. We, our, our institutions have trained us to, in the value, our, our classes, our experience. But, and, I, and, and hear me when I say that. We even pay pastors for sermons. Nobody says you should not pay this pastor for his message. Nobody ever says that. But when it comes to prophecy and when it comes to the office or the ministry of the prophet, because it's been absent from mainstream Christianity for so long, people have an issue with seeing that they are worth their labor, worth their hire as well. And that is the issue. Now, whether or not you want to say someone should be paid dollar for dollar or not, I don't, you know, that's debatable. And I'm sure here we could not begin to cover that. But I want to tell you this. When I read my Bible, every prophet was approached with 
some sort of offering or gift or something of value. Why? Because they understood going to a person in authority, going to a leader or any type of a counselor required a transaction where there would be exchange of the material for the spiritual or an exchange of the present for the future. All right, Dr. Reed, you want to add to that? Yes, um, what she's saying is, is very biblical. We see it all, all throughout the word of the Lord, um, not just with prophets, Old and New Testament, any servant, anyone who serves, anyone who gives, anyone who, especially someone who's given, um, giving you something from the invisible world, someone who's giving you something that is ethereal, something that is intangible, something that is invisible, you're supposed to um, recognize that that has been given by giving back. It is something that the first thing that we do as it relates to God is give him our life. So giving is intricately tied to a ministry and to the ministry transaction. I'm giving you of my spirit. I'm giving you of my 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 of my what God has given unto me. And then you give back unto me. I think the word that everybody has a problem with is is pay. Mm -hmm. And I think the proper term that should be connected should be giving. Um, and, and the reason why that I say that is because I don't want at any point in time, now we can't just make sure that everybody, you know, understand this, that, and the other, but I think we have a responsibility of using certain terms that can possibly um, teach people at the same time. I think that um, the term that people are having a problem with is paying. I think that we should use the term giving, even, even when it relates to tithes and offering. A lot of people say, pay my tithe, pay my offering. I think that the proper term should be giving so that pe so that people do not um, look at us as just, just professionals or just someone who has chosen um, a particular career or path, that these are callings that we have. These, this, you can't Go somewhere and then be a prophet, uh, uh, and and be made a prophet. God mm. does that, and I think that that should be recognized in the earth. When you have that opportunity to sit before a male or female prophet and they communicate to you the mind of God, your natural response should be wanting to give God a gift through that man or woman of God. All right, Dr. Price, we're coming back to you. What's the now? This should be obvious, but what is the difference between a prophet and a psychic? Okay, I'm going to answer that in a minute, but I want to back up on something that he said. Can I do that? Sure. Uh, I, I want to say that number one, the church is going to have to grow up. That's number one. Number two, prophets did not originate in the church; they originated in a nation. Before there was a church, there was an Israel, which was a nation. That means prophets were more secular than they were spiritual because there was no separation of church and state. Those, at the time, we lived in a very strongly theocratic era where the, the God of the land controlled the leaders of the land and the leaders of the land down the line. So I want to say that because the reason that we're, we're, we're having an issue with whether or not we should be professional, first of all, when you look at professional, it means camp competent, capable, and most importantly, effective as well as orderly. We're supposed to be treated, thought of as experts, experts in getting God's word from the heavens to the earth and from the spirit to the natural, then we're going to have to think very differently about ourselves. I want to say that, that number one, number two, prophets are not just assigned to the church. So the church cannot dictate the parameters of a prophet's ministry. But as I said, they began outside of the church, not in the church. Before there was a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was a nation of Israel who had prophets. And if we did not confine our exploration of this office to just the church age, we would get a better picture of what God had in mind. The fact that we've been absent, which means the office has been defunct for so long, has everybody thinking we can make this up as we go along. But we do have a true model. So I wanted to say that, Larry, because I think it's important that we realize that a prophet is not a pastor. They're not subject to the same rules as a pastor. The prophet is a whole other institution that handles a whole other side of God and that deals more deals as much, as he pointed out, with the, the outside church world or the non-church world as they do in the church world. So we're, we, we're coming back on the scene. I mean, what are you talking, 70s to now? We're still just trying to figure out what we're going to call ourselves. But we're coming back on the scene and into the office. But the, the definition of a prophet 
and the establishment of his rules and parameters can only be done by an apostle or prophet. There is no way that an institution that came after the prophetic institution was born, or even after the apostles, because there was no church when apostles got started either, that can define the, uh, what that office is and then accept the legislation for how it's to be operated. And I think that needs to be said, and I, that might be something we'll one day sit around the table in the think tank and in a conversation and probe. But right now, I wanted to get that out on the table. Having said that, I want to answer your question. The difference between a prophet and a psychic is in the sheer definition of the word. The word psychic comes from the Greek word suke, which is soul. So by the time a psychic, by the time a psychic gets the information, it's been in a planet for a while. Okay, it's not fresh information. So that's their soul readers. The prophet, on the other hand, the prophet of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ is dealing with the, uh, the book that is on everyone's life from Psalm 139, 15 through 18. Before the days were, they were fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. That prophet is getting, getting, getting classified a access to what God has written on a person and is programming or planning to bring into effect. That psychic, that's why most of what the psychic offers you is life under sun stuff. You're either going to get dead people who we don't even know how they get information or you're going to get uh, the stars which is already in existence we already know that God when Jesus took over new heavens and earth came over came into existence so that can't be effective and the only other thing you're going to get is marriage love and uh, and prosperity why because that's where by the time we get to those three things everything God's going to do has been set up a prophet and God what makes a prophet pro is because when God speaks since he's outside of time Anything he says is beforehand. And so when it hits time, then it becomes something else. But when it's outside of time, it's beforehand. So when God puts that word, and here's something that's interesting you should know about the prophetic. God doesn't just speak in the time that you hear him. God has programmed your, your genetics. He has programmed creation. He has programmed time. There are so many elements, as he talk, we talked about earlier, so many elements to making this thing happen that when a prophet speaks, it's literally a convergence of all of those providences that God has established. God is whipping up what he's doing. Everything that God is doing today and everything his prophets are revealing today or Israel will reveal to us today has already been done because God did it outside of time, threw it in time, put it in a 24-7, 365 clock, and then slowed it down to, to slow it down, and then guaranteed its, its manifestation through the generations that come. That's what Isaiah talks about all the time. God, he clocked us in every way, which is what keeps him in control. Psychics can't do that because God's not talking to them like that. See, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> All yeah, right, but, that, but, but but there's some there's something that she said that I think is is very bold of her to say that many people are not going to say, and that is that the office of the apostle and and the prophet, these mantles are God's gift, and this in my book that it's God's gift, um, if you will, to the world and to the church. It it is something I think that the church looks at this office of the prophet. Um, and they think that it is something that they control. It is something that they own. And the prophet is is a literally we're talking about the mind of God and, and the mouth of God in the earth amongst men, aligning men, you know, with who God is, you know. And that is a very awesome gift. It's a very powerful gift, and we don't see it much. Although there are many people who carry the title of prophet. Many of these people are not prophets. There's a certain power. There's a certain authority. There's a there's a, there's a certain um, um, if, uh, anointing. It's, it's the only word I can find that rests upon a prophet. And and you probably can sense it with when Dr. Price speaks because she she speaks very hard and very direct. You know, <laughs> and and prophets they have an authority, an authority, and it and it comes from God, and they can't help but just speak as the mind of God. And she put it straightforward. You know, I probably would have packaged it a, 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 a you know, I might. You I put your pastor said, package on it. <laughs> yeah, I would put. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But she said it plain. She 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 said it plain. She said the the apostle and the prophet, it the, the they govern the church. They govern the church. 
and, and many pastors do not have relationship with apostles or prophets, and so therefore they're missing certain dimensions in their local church. And so people are really not familiar with true prophets. They, they are more connected with those that have the title prophet who are actually operate in soul power or in the soul realm that Dr. Price talked about. You know, and, and that really keeps them, you know, seeing and sensing and knowing what already is, what's already known. But the prophet bringing you into alignment with purpose before time, outside of time, as it relates to you. I like the way she says, slowing down the clock, making sure you understand, and then putting it in the mouth of a prophet so that you can understand something that in time that comes out of timelessness. You know, so. I just wanted to add that that to to what she said, and also to reiterate the fact that a psychic and a prophet, or a prognosticator and a prophet, are so different. There, that I guess from the outside looking in, without a clear understanding, they may seem very similar, but they are not the same. And the reason why that they seem similar is because we've dealt with so many so many um, people who masquerade as prophets and who operate in, in the soul power that most of us have not trained ourselves to operate in. And so we just naturally think that this must mean that they are prophets and this is what it is to be a prophet. But really, they're redefining um, uh, uh, or, or improperly modeling what it is to be a prophet because that's not what a, a prophet is. So a psychic and a prophet, the main difference between a prophet and, and a psychic is that one speaks the mind of God and the other um, speaks um, more so what, what is your of flesh. the heart. <laughs> Right, yes, yeah, speak to your flesh, scratch itching ears, and just talk a whole or talk a whole lot of lot of lot of. All right. So today we're talking about your answers about the prophets and prophecy and the prophetic. We're getting those answers today. My guest today, Dr. Paula A. Price, the author of two great well, many books, but I have these, the Prophet's Handbook, as well as the Prophet's Dictionary. And then the Fivefold Minister's Reference Book by Dr. Larry D. Read. Now, you know what? I want to stay right here for a second because, you know, many times you, 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 you both talked about how you can bring, you should bring a gift to a prophet. And uh, many people have um, assumed the title of a prophet so that they can create a livelihood for themselves. Mm. And so they're going around uh, telling people that they're prophet jack leg or whatever it is. Um, just so that they can run revivals and reap offering and all of that good stuff. How can people protect themselves from people that are really not a true prophet, but have just raised themselves up uh, to be a prophet? Um, how can we tell the difference between a true prophet and somebody that just called themselves to be a prophet? And we'll start with you, Dr. Price. Um, I would like to say the first protection that I would recommend is that we begin to educate pastors. However strongly I may say things, I happen to love pastors. And I, I, I truly understand their, their challenge, that every day working to protect their sheep, working to feed them, to see to it that they're guarded and all of that. And it's very difficult. In a highly uh, a spiritually charged environment such as our setting today, uh, it's very easy to be duped. It's easy because anything that people don't know, they assume is, is high knowledge just because they didn't know it. My start point would be, let's educate these pastors, which, which is why I wrote the Prophet's Handbook. It's written primarily for pastors. It's, but it's also to include the pastors. How do we handle that? Uh, many times, because of the negative connotations that are attached to all the people who do things wrong, hallelujah, that we don't even give prophets a play. Now, you realize that we've had false pastors. Listen to our news over the years. How many pastors have fallen? How many pastors have fell in sin, lost the church, went to another religion, sold Jesus out, broke up the house, and we still saying pastors are the it thing. Well, why is that? Because we, the prophets are new. Or the, or the, the number of renowned prophets that have fallen or have led people astray in relation to the number of pastors or evangelists and teachers is... So we need to put honesty on there, a true measurement on this thing. 
That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that, yeah, people can run around and say who they are and whether they're a prophet or not, but the prophet today, according to Scripture, they said that the prophets of Jesus Christ will come with the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm. That's the first thing we need to know. The prophets today don't even know the Bible. Now, I'm stuck mm. on that. I'm, I'm stuck. I know you're not speaking for Jesus. You don't know the Scripture. You don't know what the man said. You can't use his word in any kind of contemporary context, and that's concerning. Uh, I have an issue with prophets, and all of you are listening. Larry, I hope you will love me tomorrow, because I'm sure enough going to say it. Hallelujah. You gave me a mic. I'm going to open my mouth. Hallelujah. I got a problem with prophets to stand up there and tell your business and expose you to identity theft. They're going to tell you your check and account number. Ah! They're going to tell you your name. They're going to tell your address. They're going to tell all that. And that would be a, a, a crime in, for anyone else to do. We do it to make a living. I've got a problem ah! And I got a problem with us, the people of God. Now, of right, uh, Dr. Price, I want you to repeat that because I don't want anybody to think I'm nah, censoring we can't, you. We can't Your miss internet that. connection is kind of going in and out, so I just want you to repeat the last statement that you made. I said I have a problem with prophets that are that are celebrating their ability to unmask the people of God. We're telling their social security numbers, you're telling their checking account numbers, you're telling their phone numbers, you're telling all kinds of things. One of the things that concern me about the prophets today is that they're not worried about the security of the people of God. They're worried about obviously their money. Now, if they were more mature, they would know that. When someone tells me, "Oh man, he told me everything I have to know. He told me my." I'm like, Google can do that. Go to Google. They're going to tell you anything you want to know about anybody. So that's not it. They could be sitting in that seat Googling you up because you told them your name and you came from a certain place and stand up there and tell you all about yourself. The word of God says that the prophets tell you who you are, what God called you to do, the work you are to do. And he also informs you of what he's doing in your life. But there is a wisdom and not just information. That little data messaging is not prophecy to me. That is data information, data retrieval. And it's very different. And we need to stop telling people that that's what a prophet does. That's what fortune tellers do. That's what psychics do. They were doing that before we even came back on the scene. So my concern is that we recognize what a prophet is to do. And of course, we can. I can give you a whole grocery list by my book, The Prophet's Handbook and The Prophet's Dictionary, and we talk about it. But I am very concerned about the fact that I believe it's going to come back on us and bite us one day. I believe it as surely as Jesus is Lord. Somebody's house or somebody's identity is going to get ripped off and they're going to say they're not going to figure out how it happened until later on. And these prophets are going to be called into question for doing that. Mm, mm. Dr. Reed? I'm I mean, one one of the things that that she said that is extremely important is knowing what a prophet is called to do, and as I as I stated before, um, in, in my book, the Fivefold Ministers Reference Book, I just have a, a little section. It's ten lessons. It's ten lessons, and one of the lessons is dealing with the prophetic. And one of the things that I say, and we heard Dr. Price mention, one of the first things that a prophet will do is testify of Jesus Christ, and the second thing that a prophet would do is, of course, that his prophecies will come to pass. And the third thing that a prophet would do is that a prophet will cause men to be aligned with their purpose, which most of the times throughout Scripture we see that it involves repentance. And, and one of the things that I'm seeing is that many prophets are not causing people to repent. Now, if a prophet is what Dr. Price and myself have been discussing, um, if they are agents of God and their gifts to the church, then the one of the main things that the prophet and the apostle is going to be doing is causing um, the institution and those that are connected to the institution to really come into alignment with the purpose that it was created and the purpose of God. So that's going to involve some repentance. And, and that's one of the key things that prophets do. They cause men to repent. I'm reminded of a scripture in, Je in, in Jeremiah 23. And Je Jeremiah 23, 21, 22, and also 28 and, and the ninth verses where I pull those three points from. It's because that is, and the scripture without reading it, it talks about how if you had listened to my prophets and you had heard my prophets, then you would have turned from your wicked ways.
So God's prophets have, a, uh, there's an essence that of holiness that is on prophets that calls prophets to cause people to turn away from their ways and to realign with the will of God and with the purposes of God. And this, and this always calls prosperity to happen in the life of people, which is the aspect that the prophets of today are really focusing on. You know, get with the prophet, so unto the prophet, prosperity. But the prosperity is the result of you obeying the word of God and coming to alignment with what the prophet is saying the purpose of God is for your life. And that alignment, it causes prosperity to happen. Right. And I want to also, can I say one other thing? Because I, I agree with him. I mean, that is the most important thing. But the other thing prophets do, the prophets of Jesus Christ, is they face off with other gods. They're going to face <laughs> off with your other gods. They're going to face off with your mama's God, your daddy's God, your job's God, because every time the reason God established Israel was to pull them out from the nations and thus from under the dominion of other gods. When God called Abraham, he pulled him out from the dominion of other gods. So, but the purpose and the work of a prophet of Jesus Christ is to bring you into the true and living God to not only cause the repentance that he's talking about, because that's primary, but to bring you into, to know the difference between Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ, the eternal son of God, mm. and all of the imposters that are faking him right now. Mm. And so the fact that the church can't, can't separate Jesus from anything else is already an indictment against those who have said that they're prophets in his name. Uh, you no, know, Dr. Reed, you wanted to tag the end of that? Uh, <laughs> no, I just wanted to holler. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because it is it is so true. And you know, and, and it's people, and I just want to say this, and I know this is not part of the show, but the things that Dr. Price is saying is so... And you, and you wonder to yourself at times, you know, you wonder why this isn't on such a, a much larger platform. Thank God for this platform today. I know many people are watching and they're sneaking on their phones and they don't mm. want nobody to know that they're watching Dr. Reed and Dr. Price. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, but um, this, the things that she's saying is so, so key to the alignment of the body of Christ, especially when it comes to us coming to alignment with truth. Everything that she is saying and the things that I'm discussing is so loaded with truth. And one of the things that we see in the body of Christ now, more so than anything, is a lack of realness, a lack of truth. And the key thing is Jesus Christ. People do not know who Jesus is. And that is key. And that's one of the prophet's main job is to testify of Jesus Christ, according to the book of Revelations. You know, so you suppose prophecy is supposed to align you and introduce you to Jesus. You know, so and, and you know you and you know the moment Jesus is introduced to you, there's going to be repentance. There's going to be a turning away from sin, like as she said, is is primary. And then you're going to begin to face off these things that you have you have served as God. You're going to begin. The, she said, "Mama, God, Daddy, God." And, and really, what she's saying is those things that we worship as God and we put before God. And another thing that I wanted to say in, in, in addition to what she said, um, the question that you ask about how can we know the difference between a true prophet and a false prophet. And that's why I, I always push people um, to encourage people to have prayer time and time with God. You call it time of meditation, you call it a time of introspection, but a time of communing with Father God and, and really praying and getting and soaking your mind and your heart before the presence of God. When you move yourself from prayer, I, I really believe, and also Bible study and fasting and, and overall studying the word and, and, and historical writings and things of that nature, I feel as though you put take your personal power and you put it in the hands of somebody else. So having personal prayer, study and fasting time is one of the things that's, that's going to cause you to be able to know the truth and walk therein. Amen. All right. Talking today with Dr. Paula Price as well as Dr. Larry D. Reed. Our questions today about prophets and prophecy and prof the prophetic are being answered. Uh, you know what? How important is it to, uh, you know, because we, we're starting to hear this now 
where um, prophets or whoever it is tell you to prophesy to yourself and tell yourself thus and such. Dr. Price, what are your thoughts on that? Do we have the do believers have the ability to prophesy to themselves? Believers have the ability to say anything to themselves they want to say. The question, the greater question, I think, Larry, is whether or not God has to honor what they say to themselves. Since it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to speak in our own best interest without any concern for whether or not the timing and all the other things and factors that God must consider and that he commands his prophets to consider, uh, with, all, with the absence of all of that, yeah, people can say what they want to say. The question is how much of it's happening. And then when you're, if you're, what makes what you're saying prophecy if you haven't heard or have access to the eternal record of God on what you're saying? Yeah. So, what, so what's the difference? Because, you know, we're hearing scriptures like, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And, and those uh, speak those things that be not as though they were. So how do we work all those into the fact? Well, none of those are talking about prophecy. They're talking about speaking and thinking. Let's get the language yeah. right. We're saying, if you look at the language, they didn't say predictively or whatever. I mean, and even, even when you decree a thing, what, I want to give you some, uh, a little bit of insight on that. I was just studying that a, couple, a few weeks ago, maybe. And that passage is about decreeing a thing. Do you realize who Job was? Job was a, 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 a huge leader. He wasn't the guy that's, that's pushing along or, or, or anything like that. He was a leader of the region. The, the reason that Satan asked for him is because he wanted to take him out so he can take over that region. Job was God's representative. He was God's governor in the land. So that's the first thing. And a lot of that language that they were using has to do with a person in authority and in a seat who's able to say something and enforce what they said. Many people today are, you know, we can say what we want to say. We can call it prophecy, but at our level. And I want to go somewhere. So, uh, you know, you got me all wound up now. You shouldn't ask me that. Now, listen. Um, <laughs> Thank uh, you, you know, uh, you know, I'm having a blast right now. Um, but listen, you know, we, we are we, we are in the habit of assuming that everything in Scripture is for the everyday guy, and it's not. Those mm. things were all begun by people in authority. They, why? Because, it's, you know, people can mess up all day long, but God won't hit a church until the pastor messes up. As long as the mm. pastor is working on trying to fix it up and work it out, that's fine. A business, the same thing. God won't hit a nation till the government messes up. Because when the government falls apart from him, because that's the inter, in, in, intermediary between the almighty and his spiritual righteousness and the people. But when the government messes up, then God's going to hit a nation. When the head of a company messes up, then God's going to hit the company. So we have to recognize that the word of God has different strengths in different people's mouths. The best you can do is your personal devotion. But the, the prophets, remember, I told you they were part of Israel's government. They weren't just the, the mm. guy sitting in a pew next to you. Those people weren't even recognized. They were just, okay, so you're helping the body, the, your, the, the, your community neighbor, and you're praying with them. But the prophets that made the set the model are the prophets that were in government, and they had the authority and the backing of the law of Moses and the, the, the king of the land to, to uh, adjudicate issues, to legislate and, all, and enforce and all of those things. We are not looking at this right because we're looking at the totality of what's in the old. Old Testament as if it's totally been dumped into the New Testament for the everyday person, and that is not true. So a mm. lot of what we teach, we're you realize much of what we're learning about the prophetic, about people who've never been in leadership, you're talking about people, God bless them, and this is taking nothing from them, but you're talking about people that God pulled off the street from broad drugs, pulled out the prostitute's bed, pulled out the insane place, pulled out the basement for the custodian. You're not talking about a whole lot of people who are, who are teaching this stuff, who have been in positions of authority to know the, the illogic of the, some of the things that we're teaching and passing on to folks. That's a big picture that we have to look at. We have to frame things within the context of how they emerged as a model for us. So I wanted to get that point clear. The other thing is, again, we can say what we want to say. People, you know, that's no different than somebody doing a self-help thing. You know, you can go to Walgreens and get yourself some medication, but when you have a real issue, you might need to go to the clinic. And if you have a bigger issue than that, you might need to go to the hospital. And if it's a really, real big issue, you're going to need to go to the specialist. And so it's the same with the professor. I mean, if you want, okay, I just pray God's going to give me a job today, that's fine. But you cannot pray that God's not going to lay off 14,000 people in a company because you don't carry that weight. Mm, that's right. 
Know your right. lane. Know your lane. And you know what? And I just want to say this. This this I'm I'm having like she said she's having a ball, and I, and this is very very good. This is and I love to eat. This is better than some of my most favorite food. You know, <laughs> she, she, one of the, one of the things that 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 she highlighted that is clear, and I heard it in my ear. And this is something that I want to say to those that are watching. When it comes to the prophetic. And when it comes to the office of the prophet, and when it comes to spirituality and, and and things of that nature, education plays a big part. I was listening to somebody not too long ago that was talking about um, being able to in interpret. Um, I have a gift where I'm able to interpret dreams, and I was talking about the ability of interpretation of tongues. And they was talking about, well, how do you do it? And and I told them, yes, it's a gift, but it's also an element. When you come dealing with interpretation, you have to have some education. And I think that is a missing link when it comes to um, the office of the prophet. Dr. Price, and I would like to thank myself and others that I know, are not talking like unlearned men and women. Dr. Price talks like she's been in some school for 50, 11 years, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, const constantly reading Greek and Hebrew and Latin and, and just, you know, and, and this has to do, of course, with spending time with God and God opens up your mind and God makes prophets and apostles br brilliant, but she's put the time in. And this is what I want to say that those of you that are preachers, pastors and ministers that are watching and you know you calling yourself a prophet and apostle and God and me you want. This, this is what I want to say to you. You need to educate yourself. We're talking about spiritual education and also historical education and also break, break some stuff down. Get, get, in a, get a good pastor who is connected to prophets and apostles where you can be educated and take time and grow. I'm not telling you to stop preaching. I'm not telling you to shut down your church. But if you're going to do it, you need to do it properly. And you need to look at your job for, that you're doing in the kingdom. Look, step, step back and look at it with a professional eye. Are you professional at what you do? Are you are you excellent at what you do? Are you are you doing it on a level to where anybody will be drawn to you? And that is something that I think a lot of these prophets and apostles are missing. I I, I and I'm pretty sure Dr. Price has the same testimony. I'm consulted more by people who do not know anything about church and who do not know anything about, you know, how we do what we do, but they recognize that I have a connection with God and they want that connection with God. They want the advice. They want the leading. They want the correction. And you can give these people correction and direction and they take it. And they honor you financially. They honor you. You know, they appreciate you, and they apply that word. And you see prophecy come to pass, you know, quickly. You know, because they they are, are so uh, willing in their heart to align with what God is saying. Mm -hmm. I really think that the church, how we do what we do, really is is cre is creating a, a whole nother people, a whole nother mindset that really causes many people who say they're looking for God to become anti-Christ, anti-Jesus, and really spiritually misconstrued to where when God starts sending true prophets and true truth, that we reject that and we run into the lie and continue to leave, live these lives that are impoverished, continue to leave, live these lives to where we're disconnected. Uh, and so I, I just wanted to, to pick it back on what she said and, and make that statement. All right. We're talking today with Dr. Paula Price, as well as Dr. Larry D. Reed. Your questions about prophets and prophecy and the prophetic are being answered today. What I want to do is just to go back, uh, just to recap just for a minute before I move to another segment. Dr. Price, when we promoted this conversation today, we said, so you got a prophetic word. Now what? What are some instructions that you would give to um, a believer that has received a prophetic word and they want to know what what is their responsibility? What do they need to do? Not to make it come to pass, but what is the responsibility after you receive a prophetic word? The first thing that I would do is make sure that the, the word that came was from a credible voice for God. 
Mm. You know, you just mentioned a lot of people are saying a lot of things, and many uh, people who are many aspiring, I'll use the term aspiring prophets, and not necessarily inspired prophets, are also speaking in the name of the Lord as if God is using them. You also want to make sure that God is backing this prophet. We, we've been talking a lot about the, the prophet signs, but one of the things that tell me about a prophet is how the supernatural responds to their voice. He pointed that out when he talked about how the heavens pop open and all of the agents that God's assigned to the earth, the invisible ones, begin to act. They're mobilized by that voice, by that prophet's voice, because God has sent down a mandate. This person is on my staff. I have I've tried them. I've proven them. I found them faithful. Now I'm empowering them. I'm delegating them, and I'm dispatching them. That person is going to bring a weight. They're going to bring a confidence and authority to your message that's going to persuade you that it's of God. Now, once you hear it, I think Paul's advice to them, Timothy is great advice. You right. need to pray. You need to pray for a number of things. You need to pray with the next, for what the next step is. Okay, I've, I've, I've listened to that audio 10 times. I know it by heart. And, you know, I needed to re-record it because I'd worn out the first uh, edition. So you've done that. But you need to pray to find out what the next step is. Okay, God. And that next step may be a connection with another person. It may be uh, a fast. It may be a prayer. It may be changing your job. It may be consecration. There are a number of things, but you should find out how that spiritual word is supposed to be acted on in the earth. So once you do that, Let's say you've got clarity, okay, because the first thing you want to get out of prayer is how that word is supposed to manifest. How is it supposed to show up? You know, I'll give you an example. I think, Larry, you will love this example. I have, uh, God gave me an example of somebody who was prophesied, said, you know, you're going to be a doctor. And, and I mean, God's going to use you great, and you're going to do well, and you're going to make a lot of money. Now, this person is not interested in medicine. This person is not trying to be a doctor. And so they walk away and say, the prophet is errant. Well, a year later, they get a job because they are in acting. They get a job, and the part they're going to play is the part of a doctor. Wow. Wow. Ways. Okay? So now, even though you weren't a doctor in real life, because of that part that you're playing in a movie or in a TV show, you are playing the part of a doctor. That prophet's word was true. So you need to find out how that word can come to pass and how it will fit into your lifestyle or your destiny track. The last thing I would say you would want to do, um, two things I want to add. The last thing I want to say along that line is that you want to start praying for the word to happen because the minute God speaks, God has forces and adversaries that are always trying to stifle mm -hmm. and suffocate his word and you on time. And you miss your window. And I mean a lot of things. So you want to constantly be praying that destiny and, and opportunity merge in the same second so that it happens on time. The last thing I want to tell you, and this I think is a serious admonishment, you, when that word comes to pass and God fulfills it, do not give that prophet's harvest to another messenger. You all, a lot of you all, you lost your money, you lost your wealth because you disrespected the prophet who gave you the word. So when the harvest came, you gave that harvest to a messenger you respected and God judged you for it. If you got the money from, if you go and buy a product from, you go and pick something off the shelf in Walmart, you cannot go and pay special K, I mean uh, Kmart. You got to pay Walmart for what you got. They don't care that you don't like them. So I'm telling you, when your word comes to pass, do not be an unjust, ungrateful person because God gave that person that word to you for you to remember that person and to come back and reciprocate with your material harvest when that word comes to pass. Stop sending your money to favorite ministers just because you favor them because that's unjust and you're robbing someone else of their inheritance. Great. The doors Great. of the church are open with yeah. everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Reed. Well, what are some instructions I, that we need to do? Well, first of all, you need to get your checkbook out. Well, you okay. knew the prophets have, if the word have come to pass and, and send your money. But what are, if you're still waiting on a prophecy to come to pass, what are some things that we should do? <clears throat> 
Okay, I, I, I often say this, and I think this is in my book. I say that um, prophecy has a process that it must go through, and the person who hears the prophecy has a process that they must go to, and I go through, and I call it the prophetic process. And the, the process that the prophecy goes through is the word is spoken, or is made known, or is or is waking up, like um, Dr. Price said, when a prophet speaks, they wake up what is in the mind of God what has been in the mind of God concerning you and they make it known and the moment they make it known it is 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 woken up the prophecy is 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 woken up and then i say that the prophecy and excuse my 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 word uses so the word is spoken and then the word word it wonders and then it, it wakes up and then it's walked out. But the process that the hearer goes through, the moment once the prophecy is given, that hearer is, is brought into illumination. They're enlightened by the spoken word. It's like the light comes on. I've, I've seen people, you've seen people, when you prophesy to them, it's like, wow, I didn't know that. Or mm. on some level, they may feel as though they did know it. But that moment, the hearer is brought to illumination. And then after they are illuminated, as they begin to pray, as they begin to agree with that word, listen to it on CD. Like Dr. Price said, they've listened to it over and over to where it's already worn out. Um, they must have a willingness in their heart to follow any um, subsequent, subsequent direction that, that, that needs to be done in order for that word that illuminated them to be realized. And so, um, so it, it, they go from illumination to realization, and then there's a measure of consecration, which deals with prayer, setting themselves apart for further revelation and greater wisdom that they may be able to apply. Because these are sensitive instructions, and this is something that worry me when people listen to prophets prophesy. They listen to them prophesy, don't ask for the tape, don't write it down once they get back to their seat. They don't pay attention to it. They they add words to what the prophets right. say to, so they can understand it versus writing down verbatim what the prophet said. You know, and these things are are key because these these are sensitive instructions that you must understand that you must realize um, and, and all of it's important um, because of the uh, because of manifestation what you want to experience is the manifestation that's the fulfillment of the prophecy and whenever there's prophecy there has to be right behavior they have to be right connections they have to be um, right right like she said there may be people that you need to meet there has to be alignment you know and so the, there's a process that the hearer goes through once the prophecy is given to them. And, and, and that process, if I were to sum it up in my book, if you get the book, it, it really details it out. But the best way for me to sum it up is when you hear a word, realize that it's sensitive information, align yourself interiorly and externally with that word, and just get ready for it to come to pass. If it's from an authentic prophet, the moment it was spoken, things begin to move in the supernatural realm and begin to for the um, fulfillment of that prophecy, things got mobilized, and so just get ready for for it to come to pass. Set set yourself for the process. All right, we've been talking today with Dr. Paula Price as well as Dr. Larry D. Reed. Your questions about prophets and prophecy and the prophetic answered. My guest today, Paul, Dr. Paula Price, is the author of this wonderful book, The Prophet's Handbook as well as this great book, The Prophet's Dictionary. Add these to your library today, and while you add that one, make sure you add the Fivefold Ministers Reference Book. Both of these books will be a tremendous blessing to your life. Now, I'm going to just say this, and you, you could add to it. Those of you that have um, stood in line, you've watched a so-called prophet or a prophet of God prophesy to somebody else, give them a word, and you were standing in line, and it seems as if the prophet looked over you and went to somebody else and gave them a word. I want you to take out your Bible as soon as this conversation is ended and read Psalms 1. Read Psalms 1 verses 1 through 6. Psalms 1 verses 1 through 6. All right, read Psalms 1 verses 1 through 6. That's your assignment from listening to this conversation today. Dr. Paula Price, do me a favor once more and again, tell the listening audience a little bit about yourself and how they can connect with you and get copies of your book today. Um, again, I am the author of those two books we showed you. Um, I have to get my earpiece. Just give me a minute because I have to hear um, the books that he showed you. 
And I am, you can reach me at drpaulaprice.com. I especially encourage everyone listening, if you're interested in your destiny, whether it's any one of the fivefold offices, marketplace, ministries, or anything of the kind, I invite you when you go to look at the page on my standardized ministry assessments. We've been doing them for about seven years. They've been used around the country and around the world. If you're a leader, you can even have it for your, um, your organization. I recommend that everybody listening today take that assessment so that you get hard answers, hard data instead of just soft answers or soft prophecy on who you are. It'll tell you a host of information. In addition to that, it will also give you an opportunity to talk to one of you want to find out how to do more than prophesy, then you need to contact us for the training. We have gainful employment opportunities and a host of other things that will be of, of value to you. Again, that is drpaulaprice.com. All right, Dr. Price. Dr. Reed? Well, the way that you can contact me to find out all things Dr. Larry D. Reed Ministries is to go to um, Dr. Larry D. Reed, that's R-E-I-D dot com. And you're, you'll be able to connect with um, my pastoral ministry, the prophetic ministry of my, my books that I've written, even my music ministry. The single is being released September yes. the 24th. Tell them about that, yeah. September the 24th, 2013, you'll be able to download it anywhere. And so make sure you go there and that you um, get ready to download that, that single. Buy a book, go to iTunes. You can go anywhere. Let's Google Dr. Larry D. Reed, and you'll be able to buy any, a host of different things that will bless you spiritually. All right. Well, um, if you've been tuning into this conversation, once again, I really strongly encourage you to read uh, Psalms 1 when you get a chance, verses 1 through 6. Do that as soon as we end this conversation. Read Psalms 1, verses 1 through 6. Also, if you have an Android device or a Blackbird, please download my brand new app. Uh, we were the, Last week, we were voted the most informational app uh, for our genre. Uh, download it today by simply visiting your market and then search for my name, Larry W. Robinson, and make sure you see my face and you'll know that you have the correct app. Download Gospel Updates app today. Uh, also, visit my guest's website um, as soon as you get a chance and uh, invest in yourself. As you can see, this is like 1% of the books that I have um, behind me, but invest in yourself. Invest in these books and these resources, and it will be a tremendous blessing to you. Once again, uh, the Prophet's Handbook as well as the Prophet's Dictionary by Dr. Paula Price, and then, of course, the Fivefold Ministers Reference Book by Dr. Larry Reed, Dr. Larry D. Reed. Invest in these resources today. It will be a tremendous blessing to you. Dr. Price, do me a favor. Give me some final thoughts and comments before we leave our listeners today. The final thought and comment I would have is get back to the God that called you and the one you fell in love with. That would be my final thought and comment. Sila. Dr. Reed? I will say to commit to more time in prayer and educating yourself. Amen. Don't forget, read Psalms 1, um, verses 1 through 6. And thank you so very much, Dr. Price and Dr. Reed, for joining me for this conversation. And thank you so very much for tuning in. Be blessed.